Hi, this tutorial is aimed at giving you the basics of material rendering with Marmoset Toolbag 3. We'll cover all that it takes to import a model, import a material, and assign it to the model and set up a sky and child light. And let's not forget what's available inside the render on camera tabs. There are some nice options uh, for better quality renders and post-production. If you want to know more about this rendering tool, that is Marmoset Toolbag 3. There's good content on the Marmoset official website. The articles there are free to read. I encourage you to check them out. You can also find some tutorials on Gumroad, uh, paid ones like this one by Entity Studios. Or this one by Daniel Tiger. With all of that, you'll gather the essential uh, knowledge that you need for rendering your own materials. OK, let's start by importing the model. I choose a sphere. And it's one of the shapes available with the 3D view of Substance Designer. In this case, uh, the sphere two tiles. So that's a good start. Uh, and now I'm going to import a material, a SBSR exactly. So that's a material archive uh, published from Substance Designer. I take the versatile wood planks material that I've entirely covered on this channel a few weeks ago. So click create a new material, rename it. And you can import your substance in the extra tab. Then drag and drop it to your model. Once it's done, change the resolution of your material, let's say uh, 2048 by 2048 for a good portfolio quality render. Then I just reduce the strong damage and probably decrease uh, the dust pass. But this is specific to my material, so uh, don't mind that. If you want displacement, uh, if you have a height map in your outputs, you must specify it here. In subdivision, you can choose flat or PN triangles. The latter option offers you an optional smoothing setting. Usually I pick flat. And a tessellation value of 400. Then in displacement, height, and a value of 0.01 or 0.02. I think 0.01 in this case should be good enough. But I think it depends on the scale of your object compared to the scale of the scene in Marmoset. First thing uh, I want to do is to choose a skylight. Presets. So let's try some of them. And don't forget to rotate the sky to see its effect better. I think I'm going to settle on Henny's house. And it's done. Voila! Goodbye! No, just joking, of course. Uh, let's try to decrease the backdrop brightness. I like when the background is, uh, is dark, black. And then, to create side lights, you just have to click on the image of the sky and choose something that you like. I will create um, three lights, and that would be enough for this tutorial. Then for each of the child lights, you can choose the light type, directional, spot, or omni. I almost always pick directional, or keep directional. Contact refinement. You can disable cast shadows when working on the material, but when working on a scene, you should keep it. Just be aware that casting shadows in Marmoset can lead to very sharp shadow edges. But they are trickable by increasing the light's shape width, for example. But this is out of this tutorial scope. Once you're satisfied with your light placement, 
you may want to change their respective color. Try to find a good balance for your different lights and look for having a good part of your model in a soft shadow. The way I've done it is basic here, but it works. I think it's good enough for our purpose. At this point, you may be tempted to capture the render, but we still have some more ground to cover. Just a quick tip first, if you find that your viewport is a bit slow, you can click on this rocket to activate the speedy viewport mode. What it does basically is that it stops subdividing the model. You can check the wireframe by clicking on your model and compare the two modes with subdivision and without. Okay, let's click on render. You can show the wireframe if you want to. If you want to break down um, your material in a portfolio post, or if it's an object, if it's a prop, uh, it can be interesting to do that. In lighting, use the local reflections and internal refraction if you need it and if you're working on the scene. But in this case, they don't apply. So no need to activate them. I like to enable global illumination, even if we only have one object, but you can still see an improvement in the render. And depending on your object and the style that you're looking for, you may want to click on the ambient occlusion. And you can also plug your AO output here on the right. But let's keep it down. And that's about it for the render tab. In the lens uh, menu, uh, in the lens tab, I like to use a lower than usual field of view. Something like 20 or 30 degrees is good, for a sphere at least. Now, what about the short depth of field? Just click on it and lower the near blur at zero. Set the far blur at its maximum and then find the focus distance that gives you a sharp center and slightly blurry edges. Lastly, you have to change the blur size with this setting, the max bokeh size. All right. So with a field of view of 20, a bucket size of 1 is good, and a focus distance of 270. And you have the blurry edges and a sharp center. Very important feature to have in your portfolio renders, in my opinion, but keep it discreet. I just show you rapidly flare and distortion, even though I'm not going to use them with this project. In the post effect section, if you want to, you can change the tone mapping. In most cases, I leave it on linear, but Reinhardt uh, can be interesting with certain materials. The sharpen option for wood does have an important impact in my opinion. Let's see it in action. If you want to frame your object more precisely, Type the spacebar. This is the final rendering view. But you can also click on Save Frame in the lens area. In some special cases, you can use the Bloom option. Take a moment to read uh, the description of the Bloom and see how it's done. I leave it at 0.2 or 0.3 with this one, maybe 0.2. I also like to use vignette.
but with a sphere uh, that wouldn't produce a very visible effect can work better with a cylinder or a cube of course in the scene menu you can add objects like a fog or a turntable um, we, are, we are not going to use the fog with this one but let me show you how the turntable works it's easy and it can be interesting to if you want to make a, a video or a quick gif in your portfolio And to finish this video, let's see how you can capture your render. Very easy. You go to capture, you set your image width and height. Sometimes I like the picture to be a square, but in most cases I just uh, leave it uh, like that. 1920 by 1080. The sampling is crucial for high quality renders. Choose at least a sampling rate of 100. 400 is even better and in edit preferences you can set the output directory but generally i just copy the render to the clipboard and paste it to photoshop so capture image to clipboard then wait for it once it's done you can open photoshop just paste your image and voila, put your logos and some text and your portfolio image is done. You can send it to your networks. Someone asked me if I could show how to have your material rendered flat, uh, you know, on a, on a square. This way it could be used in Photoshop to make something more complex with it. For example, with the glass cracks effect. Well, this can be easily done with Substance Painter, where you can bake uh, the environment lighting but I'll show you this uh, soon in a quick bonus video. So that's it for today. I hope you had a good time. Now it's your turn to make a render. See you.